It's December 1979 and three prisoners are extremely nervous about what is about to take place. After leaving the cells and bypassing a number of security guards, they grow more anxious at the thought of successfully escaping a prison in Pretoria, South Africa. More than one year of planning had gone into this day and they are one door away from their freedom. Not only is this one of the most incredible prison escapes to ever take place, but it is also one of the most ingenious escape plans ever executed. This is the story of how three prisoners escaped a maximum security cell in Pretoria, South Africa using only hand made wooden keys. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Untold Tales of Africa. And what is regarded as one of the most daring escapes in history, Timothy Jenkins, Stephen Lee and Alex Mombaris literally walked out of jail in 1979 in Pretoria under the hostile apartheid regime of South Africa. It's the 1970s in South Africa. The race discriminating apartheid regime had become notoriously unpopular both within and outside South Africa. Black South Africans had been oppressed for centuries, and to resist the oppressive South African regime of the time, in 1912, a new faction was formed. It was called the African National Congress. The objective of the ANC was simple. Unite all Africans together as one and defend their rights and freedoms. For decades, the ANC tried to resolve the challenges of the black Africans through non-violent protests. And following the introduction of the notorious apartheid system in 1948, the abolishment of this system became the main goal of the party. However, ANC's peaceful approach to seeking change took a dramatic turn following the Sharpsville massacre in March of 1960, which saw 69 black South Africans shot and killed. The following month, the South African government declared the ANC an illegal organization, and its members, who were now considered terrorists, were hunted down by the police. As a result, the party was forced to resort to alternative methods to continue its campaign against the apartheid regime. And this is where we meet Stephen Lee and Timothy Jenkins, two men who were supporters of the Nelson Mandela-led ANC party. Somehow, Jenkins managed to publicly spread anti-apartheid propaganda without getting caught. His ingenious idea involved using leaflet bombs. To create leaflet bombs, Lee and Jenkins would stuff leaflets containing anti-apartheid messages into a bag. They also included a detonator that was linked to a timer. The duo would scatter leaflet bombs in populated regions in South Africa. Afterwards, they would detonate them, releasing hundreds of anti-government pamphlets for people to read. Lee and Jenkins would continue to do this for three years straight, but what they didn't know is that the police were surveilling them. Eventually, the duo was arrested by the police after they were caught printing their equipment. At that point, Lee knew their luck was up and they stood no chance of avoiding prison sentences or possibly paying with their lives. Immediately after the arrest, while waiting for a trial period, the duo started researching possible escape plans. Jenkins had read and was inspired by the book Pampelon, the story of a French convict's escape from a jungle land. From day one in the Pretoria prison, Lee and Jenkins started to collect intelligence on how they would escape the heavily guarded prison which was surrounded by a 6 meter high barbed wire perimeter fence. In prison, Lee and Jenkins made their ambitions known to their fellow inmates, who in turn laughed at them to scorn, advising them to dump their ambitious escape attempt. But Timothy Jenkins and Stephen Lee remained adamant. They had asked their relatives to smuggle in some money for them to hire a taxi after their escape. Desperate in their determination, planning and executing this escape would be incredibly difficult, and if not for Jenkins' superb genius, the escape would never have happened. According to Jenkins, one night when he was laying on his bunk, he was gazing at the door lock in front of him when he had a flash of inspiration. As a younger boy, Jenkins had learned of how to pick a lock using only a wire. He figured that he could apply the same door unlocking techniques to open the doors in the prison and plan his escape. Immediately, Jenkins set out to work. He got a piece of paper and used the knife to press the paper onto the lock. This is how he got a good idea of the depth of the lock inside. With this information, he could not create a key with the correct measurements. Luckily for Jenkins and Lee, at the prison, the duo would work at a carpentry workshop. And somehow, under the noses of the guards, Jenkins found a way to make the first wooden key in less than a week after looking and studying the shapes of the keys that the prison guards would carry on their waist. However, this did not work, at least not initially. Although the key didn't turn the lock of the door in the inner cell, at least after trying it out, the marks left on the wooden key helped Jenkins know which part of the key was jamming and which areas needed to be filed down. Gradually, Jenkins would smuggle the items that he needed to perfect his key into the cell with the aid of a thermos flask. At night, the duo would get to work, filing the wooden keys down to perfection. Eventually, it worked. It was the biggest breakthrough for Jenkins. Now, he knew that he could find his way out of prison using these wooden keys. It was a simple enough solution, but executing the plan was far from simple. Beyond the first door, there was another front door that was made of solid metal. But unlike the cell door, 
The lock of the door was on the outside and could not be accessed from inside the cell. Jenkins had to come up with another brilliant idea to get the measurements of the second door. He waited until it was time to clean up the corridor outside. During that period, he managed to get the key to fit. Then he moved on to the third door. Luckily for Jenkins, this door worked with the same key that he made for the inner cell door. At about this time, Jenkins and Leah discovered that they had to make keys for 10 doors if they were to pull off the escape. Doors 5 and 6 were particularly tricky as they were situated very close to the warden's office. This is when they recruited a third apprentice, Alex Mombaris. Together, for the next one year, the trio would painstakingly manage and make and test the keys for doors 4 to 9. For the 10th and the final door, they chose not to test it as they wanted to avoid any serious risk. So, they left it till the final day to try the key. On the night of the escape, the group relied on Dennis Goldberg, a political prisoner at the jail, to distract the guards. On that day, there was only one guard on duty, and Dennis Goldberg kept an occupied in conversation as Timothy Jenkins, Stephen Lee, and Alex Mombaris made their way out of the Pretoria jail. They had left dummies in their cells to take their place, and it was not until the next morning when the wardens had realized what had just happened. They immediately sent out for a search party, but it was too late. By then, the three escapees were on the way out of South Africa towards the UK. The heroics of Jenkins, Lee, and Mabaris were captured in the movie called Escape from Pretoria starring Daniel Radcliffe and Daniel Weber. To date, it is regarded as one of the most audacious and ingenious prison escapes ever. Certainly the most daring escape in South African history. So what are your thoughts on this story? Please share your opinions in the comment section below. Kindly give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and click the notification icon so you never miss a new video. My name is Asher and I'll see you in the next video.